What we're going to use today for sure will be, I would say blankets and blocks, but really you might uh, find uses for some of your other tools that you have on hand. So just gather everything that you want. This is Rest and Restore Happier Hour. We're going to do mostly uh, movement tonight or practice, poses, stretching. Um, there's going to be a short, I would call it an express yoga nidra. So not the full 20 to 25 minutes, what I normally do, but instead just maybe what we would call an extended shavasana. That's fine. Okay. One last thing. For me. Okay. So we're going to actually start at our foundation with our feet. And for this, you may want your two yoga blocks. It's going to be a toe squat. So you're going to come into a modified tabletop and tuck your 10 toes underneath you and then set your hips back until you feel satisfied with the amount of sensation that you have, which, you know, depending on your feet, <laughs> it might not um, be super comf comfortable to rock back very far. You're gonna think about evenly distributing your weight across the ball of your foot so that no one position of, or no one toe is getting the brunt of the force. Typically the big toe is getting most of the force, but for today, think of spreading out your toes a little bit and even pressing down through the pinky. Hey, Laura. And then shut down your eyes. Put all your attention in the sensations and the sounds associated with your breathing. Imagine you could breathe energy right down into your feet, into the soles, the arches, and your toes on both sides. Sharon. We're doing a little toe squat. All 10 toes tucked, putting as much weight back on your toes as you are satisfied with. So there is a level of intensity here, but it definitely shouldn't be excruciatingly painful. And then notice how this is impacting the position of your pelvis. If you feel like your lower back is getting a little bit um, curvy or your tailbone is reaching back significantly, then come out of the stretch a little bit, take some of the weight off your toes and then just a slight tuck under at the hips just to create a little length in the low back. And if you got started on this one a little bit late, you can definitely stay longer. But if you're satisfied, Let's walk the blocks out further. Pull your lower legs off the ground and squeeze behind your knees as you point your toes back behind you. So like you've got little ballet feet here. And then come onto the tops of your feet. One, two, or zero blocks are gonna go between your heels. And if you had a bolster, you could also sit on a bolster, but I'm just going to sit on my block stacked and then bring my spine up to neutral, just sit in a comfortable position. And then in this one as well, we're trying to see if we can get the load distributed across the top of the foot so that the pinky toe is also touching and it's not just all defaulting to our biggest toe creating a fanning out of the toes. And then try to be still, close your eyes. Observe the length and the quality of your breathing. And 
just kind of making those comparisons, inhale versus exhale. It's not a terrible idea to make your exhales last a little bit longer than your inhales. And then we are going to do one more set of that toe squat. Tuck all 10. You can sit up, sit back. Second round usually feels a little more comfortable, but that's a very unique experience for each one of us. Now here, instead of thinking about just getting into the deepest range of motion in your feet, let's also add in just the slightest effort of pressing your toes down and brushing them backwards. So instead of being in the position passively with the pose kind of controlling us, let's try to take back some of the effort here and put a little bit of support in the, into the toes by pressing down. Two more breaths. And then rise up off your toes, untuck them, bring the tops of your feet to your mat, and then you can sit your blocks back again and stretch now the front of your ankles. Just take a peek down at your ankles. We're trying to keep them fairly straight, but depending on ankle mobility, it might not uh, look to your eye to be perfectly straight, and that's all right. Get a sense for your spinal curves here. Without being rigid, just let them express naturally. If you normally have an inward curve in the low back, you don't need to try to straighten out of that. And likewise, don't worry about the posture of the shoulders. No need to force that down and back sensation that we sometimes uh, call into play with posture. Just go easy with that. Allow the tops of your shoulders to glide softly away from your ears and create a little space around your neck. We'll be here just a few more breaths. And then you're going to come out of that, set your blocks off to the side for a moment, and come into a tabletop position. So you might wish to have something under your knees for a little extra padding. And here we're going to practice our ankle smoosh. So this is going to be more of a rotation using pressure, uh, the, the ground as pressure. So from tabletop, step your, let's just go left leg first, since we always start with the right. Try to find some nice strong support across your shoulders. And if this bothers your wrists, you could definitely pull your wrists forward ahead of your shoulders to decrease the angle of wrist extension. Or you could even do this on your forearms. So for starters, we're just gonna shift forward and back so that your heel is reaching towards the back of your mat. And then you can glide forward back into that toe squatting position just on one leg. And let's see if we can get the knee open all the way. And a little support from the tush on that left leg as well. And then drag the heel backwards, sweep it out to the side and come onto the pinky toe edge of your foot. So your ankle is crooked now. As you shift your body weight forward, you're gonna square off the ankle and come fully onto the top of your foot. And then you're gonna roll the inner heel towards your midline. Now you're on the big toe side of your foot. And then you're gonna come back to that starting position of tucking the toes. So it's a full smoosh of your ankle and foot and toes in a circular motion. 
And if you've never done this before, it can feel a little awkward at first. But once you get the hang of it, it's quite nice, at least for me. There's always going to be part of your foot connected to your mat. Either the top, the inner big toe, the bottom ball, and the outer pinky toe. Now let's circle the other way. I'm going back, in, top, pinky side. Smooshing in 360 degrees. And then we're gonna pause here, give our wrist a little rest, which could be once again, just sitting back. You can sit up, you could even stand up. Just give your wrist some attention, either in a rotation or active flexion as a counter stretch to that extension we've been in. Set your gaze on a still point and be with your breath. Seeking out that side body expansion, back body expansion. 360 degree style breathing around the torso. Beauty. Okay, back to tabletop. Step right toes back. And first, just a little straight front to back push pull. And then you're going to start your circle. It really doesn't matter which way you go first, but for the sake of cueing, I'm going to send my heel back, roll to the pinky toe edge of my foot, flip to the top, and then turn my heel inward, come onto the big toe side. And then all five toes tuck under, and continuing with that rotation. Always trying to keep one point of contact with my mat. For some reason today, my right ankle isn't very compliant. Let's go the other direction. Out, back, in, and then flip it forward onto the top. Resetting yourself now, some sort of a resting pose. You could do a standing forward fold. You could sit back. You could sit up. Soft through the jaw, muscles of the face, perfectly at ease. An expressionless face for now. And Maybe just a hint of a smile wouldn't hurt anything, but keep your lips soft. Moving air through your nose, slow it down. We're gonna shift a little bit away from this kneeling position now to a seated position. So I think for me, I'm either going to sit on my bolster or my block and have my other tools handy just in case. I'm going to turn to face you, but you can stay the same direction as you're going, obviously. I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. Begin with your right leg forward. And make sure that your knee, if you're sitting on something, make sure that your knee doesn't open too much. So you might just keep something under your leg so that your knee doesn't hyperextend. So that right leg is, is gonna be reaching forward. And then you're gonna cross your left ankle over that right leg, just like you would when you're sitting in a chair. And how tightly you cross your leg doesn't matter so much. So you could either do it more like a figure four shape 
or you could cross that thigh nice and tight if you wanted to. And then all we're gonna do from here is manipulate uh, the toes a little bit. So one choice would be just to press your toes towards the top of your foot and then pull your toes towards your, uh, the sole of your foot. What I'm gonna do actually is thread my fingers in between my toes. And then I'm just gonna hold them there. So I'm making this nice splayed out, fanned out position of my feet. And at the same time, this left hip is getting just a little bit of external rotation. And if you're near a wall, you could actually lean up against the wall. This could, done, could be done in a chair. So be sure you're happy with your position. And then shut down your eyes. Now, if you have the grip like I do, where your fingers are in between your toes, you can gently guide your toes forward and backward. Just a little bit of flexion and extension at the base knuckles. I'll take this ring off. It hurts just a little bit to have that big silver ring on. Uh-oh, there it goes rolling across the floor. <laughs> Leave it to me. Okay, we're settling back in. Sorry for the uh, disruption. Moving on now from the toes to the ankle. You could use your hand to roll your ankle in a circle and just kind of finding the end range with assistance. Or you could move your ankle all on its own and instead kind of feel around in the calf and in the shin for all those little muscular engagements that happen as the ankle turns. do one last thing with this left leg. Keep the right leg where it is, just uncross the left. Flex the top of your foot back towards your shin. Hold on to your thigh. So I'm interlacing my hands and I'm just going to bring my thigh here so my hip doesn't turn. I'm going to turn my lower leg down so that my heel is just kind of spinning and the ball of my foot is turning right and left, but that movement actually at the knee joint. So if you take a look at your knee, you should be able to see how the tibia in your lower leg is rotating inward and outward. And then if you wanted to add one last layer to this knee rotation, you can swoop your feet, your foot back to the ground, out, up, and in, but be mindful that your hip doesn't start to help. We're trying to keep this movement isolated to the knee and a little bit in the ankle. And if you're doing the full, full circles, go the other way again now. And then I'm just gonna simply switch sides Left leg is kicking out, right leg is crisscrossing. And then you can either just manipulate your toes or you can thread fingers in between the toes, which takes 
a little bit of effort, at least on my part. I feel like I have pretty good space between my toes until I try to do this, and then I realize I don't. I'm gonna start with just making a space, and then I'll move on to the mobilization, but you do what feels right for now. Make your breathing your priority without it being overly forced. Just be interested in it. How long can we make our exhales? You can add in the gentle pulling and pushing at the ball of your foot. And then either a passive or an active mobilization. First at just the ankle, keeping that leg crossed over. Uncross your leg. Brace your thigh bone so it doesn't go anywhere. Dorsiflex your ankle so that your toes are pulling upward towards your shin. And then you're just going to spin slightly inward and outward with that lower leg. Option to add in that rotation all the way through the ankle and the knee as we swipe in and out. And then reverse out, go the other way. Okay. Now our next seated position, if you're up high like me, you're probably going to get a, get a little lower, potentially sitting all the way down onto your tush or just on a low blanket. I think I'm going to go without anything on this one. And then we're going to make what's called half shoelace pose. So your right leg will be extended. Left leg is going to cross pretty tightly over that right leg so that it feels like the sole of your left foot is opening towards the wall behind you and that your kneecap is reaching kind of towards your big toe. So it's fairly, it's a fairly tight configuration in terms of the inner thighs. And that left hip is kind of laying open slightly. And then if this is already pretty intense for us, we're just going to stay here. But if you want it a little more, you're going to actively pull your right toes towards your nose, hinge your pelvis forward, hold on to the bottom of your foot, pull your toes forward towards you, and then tuck your chin. And the more forward fold you work towards, the intensity might be dialed up. And you could be feeling this in both legs, outer left hip and the side seam on that right leg, potentially, maybe even down into the calf. And 
I'm going to find a little bit of stillness here. I'm getting close here. We've got about five more breaths or so. Just enough time for you to allow a bit of softening around the shoulders, the neck, the head, letting your trunk lay over your legs. A little bit of softness there. And then you can ease off that toe pulling and just take your hands into any position that feels supportive in this shape. And then bring your spine back upright, nice and slow. Keep the right leg where it is for now. Step your left leg a little bit wider than your hip with your knee bent, and then just Take your hands behind you for a little bit of support, and you're just going to let this left leg windshield wiper all on its own. Hmm. And then let's swap it out. Left leg reaches straight, crossing that right thigh externally rotating and opening the thigh so that if you maybe you could see that inner seam of your right leg that's kind of what we're working towards but depending on your body it's not going to look exactly the same as what you're seeing for me uh, you might have a little more range of motion you might have a little less but your the idea is to get the kneecap to be facing kind of in the same direction as your big toe and the sole of your right foot to be facing towards the wall behind you. And then tip forward any amount. If your foot is in reach, you can pull back on your toes, just like we did in that toe squat. The strap could be used if the foot feels like it's a little too far away for this. If possible, commit yourself to one minute of stillness. Tucking the chin adds that extra tensional stretch along the back line. So if you wanted that, go for it now. About halfway through.
You release the toes if you've got a hold of them. Allow your head and shoulders just to melt a bit more. Maybe you sense the stretch along your spine as well. And then utilize the support of your shoulders and arms to get you back up to that seat. Trunk. Coming back to vertical. Take your time. Hands behind you. Uncross the right leg and set it a little bit wider than your hip. And then we're going to take it for a little spin in and out. Hmm. Okay, last little bit for the knees here before we move on. Both legs are going to come out straight for you. We want to try to get the thighs, the quads, to really relax here. So if you try to do the knee movement that we're going to do and nothing happens, it's not uncommon, but it could be that you're kind of clenching through the quads. So maybe just give yourself a little pat down, a little massage there. And then we're going to take the index finger and thumb to the inside and the outside of your kneecap. And you're just going to try to gently guide the kneecap out and in. And it'll move a little bit, some of us more than others. And you can take that movement also from bottom to top. And you can also make it more rotational. And this one can feel a little strange, even if you've done it before. It always feels strange to me. Okay, I'm going to move on to a little low back and hip stillness. For this one, you're going to want at least one yoga block and or a blanket. And the fold of the blanket is going to depend on you. And it's also going to depend on how hard your block is. So if you have wood blocks or cork blocks, you're probably going to want some additional padding. But if you have foam blocks like me, you'll probably be fine without the blanket. So come to your back. And then we're going to go knees bent, feet about hip wide, peel your spine off the floor and slide your yoga block underneath your sacrum on its lowest side. And then we're going to take the feet just slightly wider and let the knees knock together. And then let the knees pull out a little wider than your hips. You can even roll onto the outside edge of your feet as you do that. So it's just a super slow, intentional windshield wiper where the legs are mirroring one another. Kind of like wings on a butterfly. If you didn't have a yoga block, you could just use a couple pillows, folded up towel that's pretty firm works, a sturdy cushion. Even a rolled up yoga mat would work. Let's just do two more of the soft butterflies. And we're going to get into a little hip extension. Left leg is going to stretch all the way out now. And you're just going to let it relax. So if your toes naturally turn outward or inward, just let that be. And then your right leg can just stay. Or you could pull your right leg a little bit closer to you with or without your arms supporting. Settle into your breathing. Eyes can shut down once again. Go inside now. And 
these feelings of peace and contentment that we seek can be elusive. And oftentimes, the more we force or try to chase that ease, uh, it can really get away from us. Stillness can help. Stillness can help that peace or that contentment just land. It might take you by surprise how it comes. Maybe even when you least expect it. If your right leg is tucked in, go ahead and place it back on your mat. Rebend your left leg. And let's have an active bridge pose here. So connecting to the powerful strength in your bum, rise your hips off of your yoga block or support and breathe. Give your glutes a nice squeeze here. Set your hips back down and let's move on to extending the right leg down to the floor. Option to leave the left leg as is or to pull it towards you. We're looking for the least amount of effort. No struggling. Simple breath in and out through the nose. Spacious. Smooth and soothing. And soft waves of breathing. Place your left foot back on the floor if it's off the ground. Rebend your right knee. Find your seat. And then lift it off of your block. Next up is an inversion. The hips are going to come back down on the block. Legs will go straight up towards the ceiling. You can just let your legs be suspended, ankles easy and relaxed, or you can remobilize the ankles, the knees, or even a little bit of exploration with the hips. Some sort of a straddle, a slight splits, working on keeping the pelvis stable. And any movement that occurs, occurs from the hips down to the toes. So no motion in the back. If you're near a wall, you could send your legs up the wall instead.
Okay, we're going to move on now. Take your time transitioning away from the block altogether. You can just be placed aside for now. And then we're going to move on to what I like to call a reverse or a tucked tree pose. So let's start with the right leg elevated, just like we had it. And then bend your left knee out to the side slightly so that your left heel is coming underneath or behind that right thigh. And then you might need to curl up to get a hold of your left foot with your right hand. You're just gonna hold that. You could also use a strap or a towel to get a hold of it. And then as you lay your left and your right leg down, your right leg is gonna land on top of your foot. And that left thigh is just gonna open slightly. So it feels a little bit like the opposite of that shoelace that we did seated. And then you could let go of the foot and just let the weight of your right leg hold it there. Arrange your arms any way that feels right. Drop your eyes closed and find your stillness. Rebend your right ankle and knee and set your right foot on the ground. And then you're gonna take both legs up again for just a second. The right leg is gonna make an X over the left leg. And then bend both knees and try to pull your heels away from each other. Left hand to the right shin, right hand to the left shin and your legs are just in a little crisscross knot. drawing both legs in towards your body, creating a sense of helpful compression in the front of the hip there. But if you feel any pinching, back off just a little bit. As you pull the legs close to you, you might feel that outer thigh hip area with a slight tensional stretch. And then let's repeat, second side. Left leg up, right knee bending, and that heel is tucking behind. Left hand will hold that right foot just to get it where you want it. And then lay your left leg down on top of your right foot or ankle. Notice if there's any unnecessary gripping around your neck or your shoulders. And release any gripping around the jaw. 
lips closed but not tight. Soft expression in your face. Eyelids a little heavy, if not all the way closed. And then our next stop is going to be arranging our resting position for our extended Shavasana. So we're looking for about 10 minutes um, for that. So it will be kind of an abbreviated body scan, but I think it's still gonna be really helpful for you to achieve body rest. So arrange yourself. Some folks like to have something under the thigh bones, something covering their body. An eye cover could be useful. Darkness is just kind of a signal to the nervous system that might be time for rest. And for our purposes today, of course, it's conscious body rest with the mind being aware, staying tethered to the ease. Arriving to the rest. Feel your skin melt around your form. And in your minds, I imagine that you could breathe through your whole body. As if you could breathe through your skin and every inhale created a little swell, a soft expansion. And in the exhale lies rest and effortlessness. nourishment and ease, freedom in the breath, and contentment throughout your body form. Backs of the shoulders, tracing up towards your neck, and into your throat. And then feel that relaxation span out from your collarbones to each shoulder. Traveling down the bones of your arms, through your elbows and into your wrists. Releasing the hands and fingers. Pure surrender there. Bring your awareness to the soles of your feet now. See them in your mind's eye. No loads to carry, no miles to walk. Just rest. Sense the tops of your feet. and your ankles. Connect your attention to a wave of relaxation traveling up the bones of your legs, through your knees and into your hips. 
pelvis heavy. Go deeper inside the pelvis with your mind's attention. Noticing the softness in the belly, the responsiveness there to breathing. Allowing your breath to reshape the belly and the sides and your back. the abdomen, a canopy flowing soft, rising, falling, so simple. Feel into the spaces between your ribs, right side of the rib cage, in the front and on your back side, right side rib sensation. Now observe the left side ribs. Front side near the sternum and outward. and attention wrapping around the back side from the spine. Breathing now the left side of the rib cage. No effort. Guide your awareness to the heart space. A little deeper there. Being the observer. Without temptation to change anything. Just be. Receiving kindness and compassion. And love that is unconditional. Feel your whole body now at rest. More ease. Perhaps feeling just a bit heavier in the tissues, but maybe a little lighter, energetically speaking. practice of yoga nidra invites us to receive a powerful statement of truth for now. 
an I am affirmation. If you're connecting with something tonight, hear those words in your own voice or see it in your own handwriting. I am. I am. I am resting. Bring your attention now to the space in the center of your forehead, the third eye space, dropping back and down behind the eyes. Recognize this area of you where your insight lies, or your intuition, your instincts. Remember that you can trust. You can trust your own insight, your intuition, your instincts. Being guided by lessons learned experiences had and also being guided by that truth of right now I am Observe the natural flow of your breath from inside to out and outside back in. Feel your breath like a ribbon passing through your body. It can be very random or very targeted and specific if you're seeking any sort of healing in any part of you tonight. Circulating the breath around your body as a way for you to come back to some soft movement. Taking it slow and simple and kind. Lots of patience here as we come out of our short rest. Pianoing the fingers perhaps, sending a little wiggle into the toes. Your head can turn side to side, finding neck sensations. ankles and wrists, knees and hips, pelvis, spine, and shoulders, reconnecting. And then 
just raise your arms over your head for just a moment. Bring your body into a little bit of a stretch. Imagining that you could create a little decompression throughout the column of your spine, some space there. And then roll to one side and use that bottom arm as a way to support your neck and head. Draw your knees in towards your chest, curl up into a smaller package, let your back round somewhat. And you can stay there as long as you need. Be closing the practice. And you have a moment or two to visit if you are in the Zoom call. I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight, for establishing this deeper relationship that we have with the layers of us that might be kind of hard to find. That true nature of relaxation that's always there under the surface, peeling away the layers of us to get to the really good stuff. Thanks everybody. Namaste.